Hello, subbies. This is Sparkle, and I am here today to share with you my Texas Enchilada chili recipe that I had a little cook off with Cardina Star. So, let's get into the video, and I hope you guys like it. I'll leave everything in the inbox box. Okay, so basically, I took three pounds of ground beef that I bought from Walmart. As you can see, beef, we're in Texas, so that's what's for dinner. Yeah, three pounds. So, I like to take a knife and go down the center of it just to separate it because the beef is so compact in that package. So, I'm going to put it in there and then I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to just separate it because I don't want clumps. I would like a nice tender uh, combination there with my beef. So, I'm just going to get a little water. It's like a fourth of a cup. Not a lot, because I want to cook it. I don't want my beef to brown and make like a burger patty. I want it to get the tenderness of the beef, but I will drain that off later. So, what I'm doing is I'm just mashing it up, getting it all nice and broke up as much as I can, because it's really cold. This mixture I will leave in this box below, but um, it's just some spices that I like that gave that taste. You know, little things like chili powder. This is just some rough dry diced onions and some red and green bell peppers that I roasted earlier and I just wanted to put in there. So I put that in there and now I'm going to just mix it all together. I prefer to cook it all together because I'm looking for a combination of like chili that has been like slowly simmered. But reality guys, this took less than 30 minutes so if you need something quick for 30 minutes that's exactly what you can do and also this makes great tacos uh nacho toppings uh if you want to do that it makes good for you want to do an enchilada in the oven you know mixture i mean like you can do so many things with this particular recipe so just gonna stir it up and then i uh, I'm going to take the back of my spoon and kind of mush it down just to get the rest of the clumps out. So I'm just going to let that go. I'm going to cover it with the lid. Kind of walk away, let it start doing its thing. Now, if you have an electric skill like I do, I like to use it when I don't want to use my stove. And this is set on 400, I just turned it up to. So that's the highest it go. So that's pretty much the steam process that I'm going with. So I'll go back and stir it up. Make sure you're mixing it. You want to get a cohesiveness with your meal. So I'm just going to, you know, get that mixed up. You know, get our textures all correct. Because we're making a chili. So we want to make it hearty. But not too small, but hearty um, for the whole thing. What I didn't show you guys in this video is that I did go ahead while I'm cooking this. I have a, a pan of cornbread that I've mixed up, and I am cooking at that time to go with the chili. Texas, we love us some cornbread. <laughs> so, I know my boys would like that. So, back to the video. Um, So, I'm stirring it up, just making sure, you know, that everything's good. So, I felt like, from the smell, when you cook it so many times, you can tell that it doesn't have no spice. Now, I happen to know that this is the perfect amount of spice for me because I pre-measured it according to, you know, the way I felt it was going to go. So, I'm going to cover it back up and let that come on up to a brown. And uh, hopefully, which I know it did, it's going to do its thing. Because you want to steam it and get it clear. Look at me. I'm such a perfectionist. I just couldn't stand it. <laughs> and I finished wiping it off when I... Uh, Went off camera because I'm going to turn it off and bring it back when it's browned, which should be right about now. So this is the meat halfway browned, but not completely browned, but it's about there. So at this point, we just want to get it stirred up and make sure it's not huge clunks of meat. It smells amazing, guys. Like, it smells amazing. So I'm going to just center in so you guys can see it. And see how it has the liquid there? To me, even if you use a cheaper brand of ground beef, you don't have to, you know, lose the flavor of it. 
because you just put a, just a little bit of water just to give it that perfect texture and then you can just drain that off later it, it takes just a second to drain anything off these days because you don't want to ingest grease it's not healthy so just going to get that up there now i believe i'm going to put the rest of the spices in there oh, i wasn't ready okay and uh, at that point it's like hmm i have to you know get the gist of it i'm trying to figure out at that point it did i want to do so many things because but at this point i took three bouillon cubes and i put it in hot water in that purple cup there to dissolve because i want to put the beef flavor back in there so now this is just a random enchilada sauce that i got some liquid smoke and a can of manwich yes manwich it has everything that i already had in there so i definitely want to use that it's, you know, use your pantry. You know, sometimes your pantry will have already drained it at this point, by the way. Sometimes your pantry will surprise you, you know, but you have to get used to it. So the enchilada sauce is kind of spicy, which is what you want because you want to, your know, chili, you know, unless you like a bland chili, that's up to you. But if you want a little spicy chili but not hot, that enchilada sauce is absolutely flawless. So you want to, you know, kind of get that going. So now that I had already drained it off camera, I'm going to come back and I'm going to put that enchilada sauce in there along with that manwich and the beef broth bouillon cubes I dissolved as well. So there's the manwich and then I'm going to stir that up. Now this is actually when I know I used the rest of the spices because I knew at that point some about those two sauces, even though they work together, they blend out your seasoning. So you want to kind of bring it back. That's the bouillon cubes that I dissolved in water, giving it back that beef flavor. And then I'm going to just taste it in my hand. Okay. And that's how I knew I'm going to have to put the rest of it in there. So I put that in there. And believe it or not, that was all the spices I put. I put nothing else. So I'm going to stir that in and make sure that's all going right and give it a good little taste again in my hand. And okay, so then it's like at this point I had a big and child. Y'all know the struggle is real. So I went on to let him taste it. So I put the lid back on. Now, after about five minutes or so of letting this thicken up, this is what the results turn out to be. Ta-da! And that is the chili, believe it or not. It's really that easy. It's thick, as you can see. It's not watery. I'm going to get some in the spoon and bring it up closer so you guys can see the consistency of it. And that's it. That is my Texas Enchilada Chili. And um, so... I'm going to show you my pan of bread that I made. It's uh, out the oven at this point, but I'm going to do like a small snippet of it. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. It smells amazing, guys. Like, I can't even tell y'all. If you make this, you will not regret it. Absolutely. And you are welcome in advance. <laughs> so that's basically that. I think I'm going to say goodbye, but I already did. Bye. And here's the picture of the cornbread. Oh my god, it looks amazing. And if you want to know that recipe, let me know below and I'll put it out there. And this is the finished product of the chili in the cornbread with a little sour cream and cheese. Have a great day, guys. Thank you for watching.